Hi, my name is Melissa Maker. I'm a cleaning expert. How do you know I'm a cleaning expert? I've had a cleaning business since 2006. I have a YouTube channel called Clean My Space that's been around since 2011. I also have a website and a book by the same name. Long story short, I knew way too much about cleaning. I've researched it, practiced, studied, tested, done a whole bunch of things as it relates to cleaning. And today, I wanted to find out what everybody was looking for on the internet when it came to cleaning, and I'm making it my job to answer the web's most searched cleaning questions. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you think me wearing glasses makes me look like more of an expert. Here's how this works. You know when you open up a browser and you type something into Google like where do I get a and then it sort of gives you a drop down list of different things that you might be searching for? That's called autocomplete. So what we did was we typed in how to clean a or how do I clean my or cleaning a and whatever came up, that's what we put on our list and that's what I'm gonna be answering. All right, let's do it. First up, how to clean my room. Now, we haven't specified here what room we're talking about. I'll assume that it's, if you're saying my room, you're, it's your bedroom, but it could be any room. At Clean My Space, we've come up with what we called a three-wave system, and that is what we use to clean any room in a space. So when I'm cleaning my room or a kitchen or dining room, whatever it is, we always follow this three-wave system. The first wave is tidying and organizing. That way you can actually clean your space once it's tidied and organized and a little bit more sane. The next wave is called clean, dust, and disinfect. So that's when you're actually gonna go through and you're gonna do your polishing, your dusting, your disinfecting, and all of the actual cleaning work. The final wave around your room is floors and garbage. Now, we've created lots of videos using the three-wave system. I will link our Clean With Me videos for you down below so you can check them out. We've got one for bedroom, living room, all kinds of different rooms around the house. But if you wanna see some updated Clean With Me videos in our new house, feel free to let me know in the comments. How to clean my dishwasher was another one that came up. Now, we, again, have videos on how to clean your dishwasher. I will link those for you down below. When I read a question like this, the two things that come to mind, first of all, there's an odor coming from your dishwasher, and second of all, your dishes aren't coming out clean anymore. Those would be the two key reasons why you might wanna clean your dishwasher. So the odor issue has to do with what's building up inside of your dishwasher. Number one, I would leave the door open when it's not in use. Number two, I would clean the filter. That also applies to the second issue, which is if your dishes aren't coming out clean, probably means there's some crap stuck in your filter that you need to deal with. You notice that you're getting odors coming from your dishwasher. Remember, your dishwasher is made out of plastic on the interior. Plastic is porous, so it's going to absorb pretty much anything that you put in there. Another great tip is to rinse your dishes off before you put them in the dishwasher. I know it's 50-50, rinse, don't rinse. I'm telling you, just rinse your dishes just to get rid of some of that preliminary stuff. That way you have less food particles floating around in your dishwasher, clinging to the plastic, leaving odors, and getting clogged up in your filters. But if you do need to clean your dishwasher, we got you covered, check those videos. You wanna clean AirPods essentially the same way that you clean earbuds. Here is what you'll do. Get yourself a dry cleaning toothbrush and a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol and maybe a cotton pad. We'll see how advanced we have to get here. Take your ear pod, hold it so that the speaker part is facing down and take your cleaning toothbrush and just gently start brushing to knock out any of the debris. Next, you're gonna take your cotton pad or a cotton bud and you're gonna dip it in some rubbing alcohol. You'll just give the surface a wipe down. This helps break the bond between the wax and the surface and it also, the alcohol is very fast drying, so you don't have to worry about it sinking in to the little speaker part. But make sure it's not a, I know it's not a speaker. I don't know the technical term, but you guys know what I'm talking about, that little grilly part that goes into your ear. Make sure that you don't get too much liquid in there because obviously you don't want to ruin it. That's the beauty of using rubbing alcohol though. A little goes a long way and it won't cause damage. For those of you that use a beauty blender, you are clearly Googling how to clean them. Now, I've used beauty blenders for years and in fact, we made a video on how to clean a beauty blender years ago. But I'm just gonna give you a quick refresher. If you don't clean your beauty blender, over time, what ends up happening is the bacteria from your face, because you're dabbing the beauty blender on your face, 
your sponge is picking up bacteria from your skin and over time that'll sit there, it can fester and then when you use it again, you can redeposit that bacteria onto other parts of your face, which normally wouldn't be a big deal, but if you have acne bacteria, it's probably gonna cause outbreaks in other parts of your face. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're cleaning it every now and then. Frankly, you should be cleaning it after each use, but I'll leave that to you to decide. There are a couple different ways you can approach it. You wanna use a gentle soap. People use all kinds of things from baby shampoo to Castile soap to hand soap. You do you. I would recommend using a gentler soap for me. I actually do prefer Castile soap. You apply a little bit on the palm of your hand. You can roll your brush around in it, get it, your sponge around in it, get it a little bit wet and start rubbing it under the sink. Another great tip that I've learned on how to clean your beauty blender is to throw it into a delicates bag and toss it into your wash. And that way it'll get nice and clean and it'll come out of the wash. And of course you don't need to dry it. Just let it air dry. People are curious about how to clean white shoes. Now there are so many different iterations of what white shoe could mean. We could be talking about the soles of a shoe, which we want white. We could be talking about a canvas or a nylon shoe that could be white, or we could be talking about a coveted white leather shoe. Either way, they all have different cleaning treatments, so here we go. If it's just the sole that you wanna get whiter, that's a simple fix. You can use a cleaning toothbrush, a little bit of dish soap and water. If you have quite a mess, you can use some white toothpaste without gel to clean the sole. You can use some dish soap on there. You can even use some baking soda. Then just rinse the sole nicely and you'll see that your old sole is actually gonna look much nicer and much fresher. Now, if you have a canvas or a nylon shoe, of course, make sure that you check your fabric care instructions first. And yes, shoes come with those. If you're not sure what to do for your specific shoe, you can always look that model up online and the manufacturer should tell you exactly how to clean the shoe. But generally speaking, you can machine wash these. So what you might wanna do is get yourself a delicates bag, put your shoes in the delicates bag, toss them in the washing machine, regular detergent. I prefer cold water and a gentle cycle. By the time they come out, you can either air dry them or take that same fabric laundry bag and hang it on the back of your dryer, close the dryer door, and then that way you don't have your shoes tossing around, but they'll still get the dryer effect. So that's another great thing that you can do to clean your nylon or your canvas shoes. Now let's say that you have shoes with leather uppers. You want to be very careful with those. You can clean the sole the same way we've already talked about, but you would want to use some sort of special leather product, a leather cleaning product to treat those specifically. And if you're obsessed with your sneakers, you know that there are products out there. That's something you're gonna to wanna to spend the money on, especially if you've invested in beautiful, crisp, clean white sneakers. And honestly, nothing looks better than a pair of crisp, clean white sneakers. Now, the final note I will make is your laces. If your laces are supposed to be white, but they kinda of look muddy, dirty, very simple fix. Pull them out, throw them in that delicates bag, toss them in the wash with the rest of your whites, and they will come out looking brand, brand new. Another hack, you can soak them in oxygen bleach, give them a rinse, and hang them to dry. How to clean your TV screen came up as well, and this is a great multi-purpose one because it covers off how to clean your laptop screen, your phone screen, your tablet screen, any other electronic screen surface that you have in your home. The first thing you have to know is you must clean this with a flat weave microfiber cloth. That is very important because if you use anything that has a weave to it, anything with sort of little fingers, if you will, they can hang on to debris. And then when you're cleaning your surface, the surface will get scratched. So don't come telling me if you don't use a flat weave cloth. Here's what you'll do. You'll take your flat weave cloth and you're gonna put a little bit of water into a spray bottle. This is important. You're gonna hold your cloth up, mist your cloth gently with the water. You want it to feel about as damp as it would if you just sneezed on your hand. Now you know exactly how much moisture to have on your cloth. And then you will quickly apply what I call the S pattern to the surface. You start at the top right hand corner, you swing your way over to the top left, and then you zigzag your way down to the bottom. This is great because it covers the full width of the screen and it also ensures that you don't get streaks. 
How to clean my fake eyelashes came up quite a bit as well. If you've removed fake lashes before, you know that they look like little caterpillars, but you've paid good money for those caterpillars, so you wanna try and get a few uses out of them. Now, if they're mink lashes, you do not wanna use any makeup remover on them whatsoever because it'll, they will lose their shape. So all you can do for those, and of course, don't put mascara on them either. All you can do for those is just remove the glue from the back of the lashes using a pair of tweezers, all right? That's for your mink lashes. But for all other lashes, here's what to do. Once you take them off your eye, you're gonna either use that tweezer trick just to pinch off any of the glue from the back of the lashes, or you can dip a cotton swab in some eye makeup remover and quickly remove that. Next, you're gonna take two cotton rounds. You're gonna soak those in eye makeup remover or a little bit of micellar water. You're gonna place the lash on, you're basically gonna sandwich the lash between the two cotton pads and you're gonna let it soak for about 30 seconds. This will help loosen up any remaining glue, body oil, or mascara. Once that's done, you can allow them to air dry and voila, you can use them again. Well, believe it or not, that's actually my version of fun. I love going through and seeing what the internet's cleaning conundrums are and providing answers for them. So let me know in the comments if you found this type of video fun and cool, and if you had any other cleaning conundrums that I have yet to answer, because perhaps I will answer them in an upcoming video. And I'd also love to know in the comments, cleaning aside, what are your thoughts on false lashes? Do you agree with them? Do you find them gross? Do you find them appealing? Do you find them ridiculously complicated to put on? Let me know your emotional output about false lashes in the comments down below. I happen to love them. I love the way they look, but I can only ever get them on with a makeup artist. I have tried and I literally have caterpillars going up my eyelids. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, aside from Googling what you're Googling about cleaning, you can find us on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us are at Clean My Space. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love, and if you wanna learn more about Maker's Clean microfiber cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video, and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.